It's been a year of the eights and Lenovo seemingly didn't want to be left out. So skipping the seven, Lenovo's launched the K8 Note, a successor to the underwhelming K6 Note from earlier this year. So how does this one fare? Well, let's find out in this video. But before we do, if this is your first time here or in case OEM skipping generations has you all confused, my name's Ash, this is C4 Retech, and welcome to our full review of the Lenovo K8 Note. Let's get started. With the ginormous amount of devices being launched these days, we feel the need to start this review with the question, what's the K8 Note? Well, it's a large battery toting smartphone from Lenovo armed with dual cameras and a 5.5 inch display to the front. The last bit seemingly being enough to warrant a Note moniker. Now with that out of the way, let's take a closer look at the placements and build. To the front on top, there's a earpiece sensor, a 13 megapixel selfie camera, a single LED flash followed by a 5.5 inch 1080p display. We then have the capacitive buttons that sadly are not backlit. This was an annoyance in the 5 days that we spent with this phone. Anyway, moving on to the back, we've got the secondary notch cancelling microphone, a dual camera setup, a dual tone dual LED flash, a fingerprint scanner and the Lenovo branding. This scanner worked fine, we didn't face any issues with the accuracy, it was quite snappy too. To the right, we've got the power key and the volume rockers. On top, there's the 3.5mm headphone jack, the primary microphone, the micro USB port and a loudspeaker is at the bottom. To the left, we have the music key, a very underrated feature that I really loved and will get to in a bit. We also have a dual SIM slot and a dedicated micro SD card slot here. Now while the exterior of the phone looks like almost every other metal unibody phone out there, no points for originality, but the quality itself is quite good. This phone feels sturdy, the 180 gram weight adds to the heft, yes, but it is spread evenly so that even with long usage, it doesn't really get tiring on the hands. With that said, the 76mm width, thanks to that, single handed usage seems unlikely. Most of the times I ended up using this phone two handed. But the aluminium body with curved edges to the back and the rounded corners did help with the grip. Add to all that, the K8 Note comes with splash resistance, so it can handle the occasional rain. It doesn't have any IP certification, but it can, for what it's worth, handle a few splashes. Let's now talk about the display, go back a bit. This is a 5.5 inch IPS LCD display, we've got Corning's 2.5D Gorilla Glass on top for protection. The resolution is Full HD, meaning a pixel density of about 400 pixels per inch, which is quite sharp for most things apart from VR. The display quality seems to be quite good, the color reproduction and contrast seem to be on point. The viewing angles are excellent and it gets bright enough to not pose major issues outdoors. Now. Let's move on to what's underneath the hood. This time around, Lenovo's gone with a MediaTek Helio X23 chip, Mali T880 MP4 handles GPU duties, the X23, which, which a lot of apps including Antutu and CPU-Z read as the X20, is a performance chip from the MediaTek stable. It has its share of pros and cons. Now first, let's talk about the pros. This is a monster of a chip. It's got 10 cores that are split into three clusters. First, four A53 cores clocked at 1.4 GHz each for light tasks. Then, four more A53 cores clocked at 1.8 GHz each for heavier tasks. And finally, two A73 cores clocked at 2.3 GHz each for the most intensive of tasks. Given this setup, the K8 Note probably has one of the most powerful SoCs on a phone in this price segment. If you've seen a speed test, the X23 easily outperforms uh, other Qualcomm chip, chips like the Snapdragon 625 or 430 on phones priced similarly. But that said, MediaTek chips have a couple of issues and they return to haunt the K8 Note. Firstly, the GPU, the Mali T880 MP4 GPU here gets outperformed by its Adreno counterparts on Qualcomm chips in this segment, so the K8 Note does have issues that a phone with say Snapdragon 625 wouldn't. It's not a deal breaker, it's mostly minor, like for example with some popular games, we experience way more frame drops than we would with a Snapdragon 625. So while the K8 Note shines with regards to CPU intensive tasks, do check out the rendering times on our speed tests, I'll leave a card here. It performed quite impressively compared to Snapdragon 625. It does leave a bit to be desired with regards to GPU intensive tasks like gaming. 
As for the reports of overheating, I personally feel they are grossly blown out of proportion. The K8 Note doesn't get heated up even after uh, 30 minutes of gaming. Like again, here's a car to a gaming review. You can check that at the end of our session. It was about, about 42 degrees in particular places and that isn't really hot. It is warm. Anything under 45, we give it a pass. We don't call it hot. Uh, it's generally usable, not a big problem. The next con though comes in the form of idle battery drain. This has been a MediaTek bane for as long as I can remember. And sadly, it still remains so. The 4000 mAh battery inside does do well. It can easily get you through a day of moderate to intense usage even on a single charge. But even with light usage, you can't really get through to day two because the idle drain overnight is a little too high. But if you are like me and plug in your phone in the night, every day you shouldn't you should be fine for the most part and anyway rounding off the spec part of this review is the fact that the k8 node has two variants one with three gigs of ram and 32 gigs of storage that's what i'm using here in this review and another with four gigs of ram and 64 gigs of storage and with that let's move on to one of the usps of this phone the cameras the K8 Note sports a 13 megapixel f2.2 primary camera that I did misreport as f1.7 in my unboxing. My apologies guys, I'd make sure that that doesn't happen, I'll try to avoid it as much. So sorry about that. Then there's a secondary camera that's a 5 megapixel sensor for capturing depth information. The camera interface is similar to the one we've seen on the G5S and the G5S Plus. The shutter response is quick. There's a panorama and a pro mode. You have control over everything from ISO, shutter speed to focus and white balance. Outdoors under good lighting conditions, this camera performs really well. The images are sharp with a lot of detail. Zooming in, you can see the veins on this leaf here. The colors look quite good. The dynamic range isn't up to the mark. You could see the shadows being way too dark, kind of getting crushed and the highlights being completely blown out at times. But once you turn HDR on, it does get much better. There's a lot more detail you could see on the roof here in this image and the shadows are brighter as well. Here's another picture with HDR on. Back to the camera interface itself, tap here and you can find the depth enabled mode. There are three different levels of blur to choose from. Here are a few samples, not the best execution we've seen before, but I guess it's okay for the price. Given the f2.2 aperture and a lack of optical image stabilization, there's not a lot I expected this camera to do under low light and it kind of performed the way I expected it to. The colors look good, but there's a lot of noise in the images. There are other phones in this price segment that can perform better under low light. The K8 Note can shoot 1080p videos at 30 frames per second, yep, no 4K. The quality of the footage is fine, good detail levels and color reproduction, average dynamic range. The 13 megapixel front facing camera can capture some sharp selfies. There's a lot of detail just like on the images shot with the rear camera. The colors are natural, the camera manages to get the skin tones right. The dynamic range though is just about okay. Now with that, let's talk software. Lenovo recently scrapped their Vibe Pure UI in favor of stock Android for all their future smartphones. And the K8 Note, guess what, is the first of those future smartphones. It runs on Android 7.1.1 Nougat. There's a little blow, just some Microsoft apps, and those are also un uninstallable. There are also a few first party apps available like FM Radio and Dolby Sound Profiler, which enhances the audio experience. One of the things the K Note phones are meant for are their audio capabilities, and Lenovo has kind of delivered here. While yes, we don't get stereo or front facing speakers, even the audio output via the speaker was good, and so was the audio output via the 3.5mm headphone jack. To enhance the multimedia functionality of this phone, Lenovo decided to bolster the stock media options with their own Theater Max technology. So if you have a VR headset, you can experience all of your 2D media as if you're watching it on a 100 inch display right in front of you. And then there is the music key to the left. It can be used to play, pause and change tracks, but that's not all. The key can also be mapped to perform other actions like opening the camera app or taking a screenshot. This is by far the most underrated feature on, on this phone. For most of my time with the K8 Note, I use this key to launch the camera app. 
I adore the fact that the key can trigger actions even with the screen off. So overall, with stock Android, Lenovo's tweaks and the X23 chip, the user experience is quite good. Apps opened up quick without lag. There's definitely room for improvement with things like RAM management. That's the main reason why the K8 Note lost out on our speed tests. And on that note, let's talk price. The K8 Note is available exclusively via Amazon.in for 1299 rupees. that's for the 332 variant and for a thousand bucks more you get the 464 variant. At these prices, the K8 Note is definitely not a bad offering. It does kind of feel like a jack of all trades. It's got a powerful CPU, but not the most powerful CPU in this segment. It's got a okay GPU, not the best GPU in the segment. It's got a high capacity battery but not the best battery life in this segment. It's got good dual cameras, but not the best dual cameras in this segment. I'm, I'm sure you get where I'm going with this. All that said, these are, I mean, none of these are really bad. They are good, but they just are in best in segment. So it doesn't have that one USB that where the K8 Note does much better than every other phone in the segment. So if you want an all-round device that does everything reasonably well, then the K8 Note is something you can consider. But if you give higher weightage to some aspect or the other, there are other devices in the segment or a few thousand bucks higher that will suit you as well. So there you have it, my two cents on the K8 Note. Do you agree with what I've had to say in this video? Do you disagree? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you do want to pick a K8 Note up, I will leave a direct link in the description below. Use them, helps the channel out. Use. If you hated this video, well, but if you did like it, give it a big huge thumbs up. And for more videos like this, hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. If you have already subscribed, hit that bell icon to make sure you get notified each and every time a new video goes live here on C4 Retech. So that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this year is Ash from C4 Retech, calling it like I see it. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.